All right, so we finally got some floppy diskettes for this computer here, the old Osborne. One of five discs that we've been schlepped. All right. Ah, uh, yep. Insert disc in drive A and press return. Well, I mean... Press return, can't... yeah. Oh, 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 there it goes. It's Warren. Good God, that screen is tiny. Boot error. Okay, we'll try the other discs. Well, uh, we just got bad sector error on disc two and three. Right now, disc three is in there, and yep, mm -hmm, bad sector. Well, before we try number four, I want to make sure we're not actually damaging any discs by having them in a dodgy drive. So what I want to do is I want to swap the drives, because there's no way to tell it to try booting off this drive. So we'll just try physically swapping these. Okay, so it looks like this cable comes out of this drive, goes in here, and then there's a cable that comes out of here that then goes down to the motherboard here. So it's daisy chained or something. It's not two separate cables going to the board that we can easily swap. So it looks like we have to get inside here to swap the drives around. Because the first thing I want to be able to do is switch drives and try to make this one be the boot drive. Okay, so it looks like we need to remove those screws and this one screw here, huh, to get this out. Okay, I give up. I was hoping not to have to take this board off, but it's just too hard to get to that screw back there otherwise, even with my little devices. And at some point, this came out. I wonder if this is important. This looks like an optical encoder thing. Hmm. Okay, now I can finally get at that screw. Ah, so this is what's on the other drive. Incidentally, the non-working drive, or at least the drive we know for sure doesn't work. And let's see, I don't see anything that reflects off this. So maybe this is for some factory calibration? Not sure. Anyway, yeah, it looks like this sticker is supposed to go there. Ah, and this little note with the signature fell out of that. So thank you, person who must have checked that and had this unreadable signature. What do you think it says? I think it says Larry. Oh, why, thank you, Larry. Okay, I first want to keep track of how this goes together. So the A drive is coming through like this, and then a cable comes through here, goes over here, and it goes into the top here, and then the cable that comes out the bottom here of the B drive goes to the motherboard. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to swap this with this. And why exactly do you want to do this? Well, it's preset to boot off this drive, and I don't see any way to change that. So what I want to do is to change the drives and see if we can try booting off this drive and see if that drive works. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Aaron Lanterman is now going to disconnect the disk drive from the rest of the computer. Okay, so this comes out here. Oh, that was surprisingly simple. Oh, oh, it's one of those connectors. I thought it was like soldered directly yeah, on. Yeah, and then we can do the same thing over here. And just do the old swappy swappy. Okay, welcome to the deconstructed Osborne. So we swap the drives and my son is now going to hit return. Boot error, 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 boot error. Okay, but this is something new. So, I think it's deciding what disk to talk to based on something on the drives themselves and not the cabling. So, it looks like there's a resistor pack that you need to install to indicate what the last drive in the chain is. So, to get it to identify the drive that I want it to identify as A, we're going to swap this resistor pack into the other drive. So, we swapped it, so it should recognize this as the first drive now, as drive A. Being the last one in the actual chain is drive A. Although, we discovered reading the manual that there is a keyboard combination to boot off drive B, so this is probably a necessary work. But, of course, that assumes that the keyboard's working all the way, so who knows. Oh, yep, that one is worrying, and we're getting boot errors. I've got boot errors by the dozen, troubles by the storm. 
I'm playing in Vegas. Oh, yep. Mm, okay, oh, blue jars. Um, is the drive supposed to be spinning like that? Uh, I don't know. Is it supposed to be warring like that? That deeper warring? I don't know. All right, so according to a form I found, ugh, I didn't photograph the user. Thank you, whoever user posts this on the 18th of February, 2014. But pressing the quotes key and the shift key will boot off of drive B. Yep, okay, it's trying to boot off drive B now. Boot error. Boot error. Oh, that's disappointing, because we did boot very error. briefly see a CPM looking kind of thing. It said it was trying to load CPM and we saw a logo. I'm just gonna push random buttons until something happens. That's a big fat boot error to me. That's a two yeah. of them. So that was disc number two we got off eBay. Just pop up. Yeah, the different discs give different rates of boot errors. I'm not sure what that means. That's a new noise. So which one was this you gave me? Uh, that was disc number four and we're getting boot error on A? That doesn't make any boot sense. Boot error. Oh, no, that is... Yeah, well, maybe it decided that that should be A, but now we're getting a bad sector, so that's a new behavior Wait. that the other discs weren't doing. If it's deciding that's A, maybe I'll just try pressing return. Nope. Same okay, I'm going to try disc one again. So that is acting differently than the other discs did. Okay, so we're going to try again that disc number one that did at one point say trying to load CPM. Should I press shift in quotes or return? Oh, uh, shift in quotes. Yeah, see, that makes a different kind of sound than the other ones did. And it's giving us boot errors, but a slower Instead case of sector than the error, yeah. So we've already got boot error or sector error. Is that a problem with the disks or with the... Yeah, so some of the disks give us boot error and they, they have the boot errors coming very quickly and it makes a whir. This disk that I think has CPM on it. it, says boot error, but you hear a little ching ching, and it comes more slowly. Some of the disks say bad sector. I'm gonna just for fun try this in the other one, and we'll try the return to try this disk instead of the other one. Okay, just for fun. Whoa, look at all those boot errors. Yeah, so this one's very different. This drive here makes a bunch of boot error signs appear very, very quickly and you don't hear that ka-chung, ka -chung. This drive will make the ka-chung sound and the boot error indications come more slowly. But at one point we did see something that looked like the Osborne logo and we saw something that said it was trying to load CPM. Okay, so we're gonna try to clean the heads and really get in there. So instead of using one of those little floppy disk size-based cleaners, we're actually gonna get in there with a Q-tip. Okay, so one of the discs gave us this before giving us an error. Okay, so we're trying to get the Osborne to work. At oh. some point, we swapped what's drive A and what's drive B. But anyway, let's see, my son's gonna hit return. Well, I mean, we're trying to get the disc drives to work. Oh, yep. Up. All right, it's spinning and we're getting boot error. It says boot error. Boot error. Right. We're either getting boot error or a bad sector error. In either way, it ain't okay. good. Okay, I want to watch this little head thing. Is this guy doing what he's supposed to be doing? I don't see it moving. We're not sure if it's supposed to, if it's actually found the right track and just having trouble reading the right track. But earlier, I thought I saw this thing move and after it moved, it gave us the BDOS error. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so we're gonna try loading off this drive on the Osborne. I'm seeing predictable phase arrays. Okay. And boot error, yep. Oh, did, but did you see it move though? I think I th saw it move. Oh, I saw Wait, it move again. Uh, I saw it, I saw it. <gasps> it's moving, it's moving. Okay. Should it be moving more, though? I feel like it should be different. Oh, it moves, it's moving the other way. Oh, it's moving to the right. It's like the world's slowest typewriter. Type reader, I guess. When I hear that little chunk sound, should it be moving? 
Dad, do you know the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results? Yep. Yeah. Uh, boot error. Sadness. We're getting nothing but boot errors here. Yeah, I don't know if we're supposed to be seeing this little guy here moving. Is anybody in the comment section an expert on the Osborne One disk drive? Well, there are definitely people on a Facebook group that are experts on this. So let's let's see what this sounds like in the other drive. Okay, now we're trying this drive. So that sounds very different. Yeah, this one's more rough. Are we getting anything different on the screen? No, it's still boot error. Well, oh, whoa, the thing moved a whole bunch. It's clicking, it's clicking, it's clicking. Yeah, I saw it, I saw the, whoa, well, and when it moved a bunch, it gave us a bad sector error. Let's try it again, let's try it again. Yeah, so at least that, that one I'm seeing move a lot more than the other drive. So I'm wondering, is the this thing here on this drive kind of getting stuck? I'm not really sure. Huh. Let's try another disc. Okay, so we're trying a different disc on this one. Oh, I, I saw that little head thing move. It's giving us boot error. So I have no idea if that's an appropriate sound for an Osborne disc. Okay, I'm just gonna try this one more time. I'm gonna watch this little head thing here. I think I saw it move. Boot error. I don't know if I should be seeing that head seek motor moving more or not. Still getting boot errors. So the thing is, there have been a couple occasions where it looked like it started to boot CPM. It said CPM, and I saw the Osborne thing, and then it gave us BDOS errors. But most of the time, we're just getting these boot errors on both of the drives. And we still don't know if it's the disk or the drive. It's, it's possible that when we started this work, that there was some gunk on the heads before we cleaned the heads, and that messed up the discs. So maybe I should get another set of discs, but I also, I'm wondering what the standard sound behavior of these drives is.